And tonight we're just out here on the lake that I actually live on. And Patrick and I were just kind of reminiscing how um, it was just four years ago we were standing literally right here looking at our lake. And it wasn't to come out and look at the lake. It was come out and say, Patrick, we need help. And um, that was four years ago. And three years ago you kind of took over the management of our lake. I'd like to take a lot of credit for uh, Weeders Digest or the association, we've all done our part. But in the end, um, Patrick, tell us a little bit about kind of how we got to where we're at three years later. And I will say three years later, and we're out here tonight, you know, kind of almost celebrating the results that we've got. And we're amazed and Patrick's just saying it's part of his job. So go ahead, Patrick, tell us a little bit about what, what you've accomplished. Well, we've accomplished several goals out here. We've uh, eliminated the invasive species, uh, Eurasian water milfoil. Um, as of today, we haven't found any of it. We've uh, eliminated the invasive species, uh, Eurasian water milfoil. Um, as of today, we haven't found any of it. We've uh, eliminated the invasive species, uh, Eurasian water milfoil. Um, as of today, we haven't found any of it. Uh, and this is September, so we've gone through a season, season with no milk. With no milk. Uh, we're also working on another invasive curry leaf. We'll get rid of that here in hopefully a couple more years. But what we do differently is is that uh, we don't really just go out and start pumping chemicals in the lake. We look at the lake, we do surveys, uh, and, and use a scientific method um, of applying practices. Uh, we use what we call best management practices. So we go out to the lake, we'll, we'll do an assessment, um, determine what needs are there. Uh, we look at how the homeowners use the lake, we look at how the fishermen use the lake, and then we also look at what's already in the lake. Once, once we accomplish you know, a, a, an assessment, we then start what we call a prescription process or a planning process. And we'll tell the associations to take a year off if they have to, to do that plan. Because if they don't do the planning, they're going to be doing the same thing and applying a band-aid for years and years. So once we get this, this plan done, we can start implementing those. And we're always constantly monitoring. We don't ever give up that assessment phase. It's, it's a cycle of assessment, prescription, and then implementation. And then we'll go and, back into that. I think that was probably one of the biggest differences that we saw was there was a plan. There was yeah. an implementation and really where we've accomplished today. I, I, I think it's also worth pointing out that we're only um, seven miles from the heart of downtown Minneapolis. We don't have a flow of clean water that's coming in here. We're a, we're a holding pond basically for the streets of Plymouth. And yep. so, you know, we kind of, and, and when you showed up here, we were full of milfoil, curly leaf. Um, Planktonic uh, algae was a big one. The, the day that you came. It was green. The algae yeah, was green. green. <clears throat> so what you started with, you were you were already in the hole when you started. So I, I you know, I think back to your point of prescription. Um, again, I don't know that we would have believed you were going to get us here, but you probably knew well in advance. <laughs> yeah, and and you know we have a long history of doing that. But that's that's how our company works. We don't just go out and start putting the products in. We we take the time, do the homework, look at the science, and see what the science tells us, rather than. Okay, you've got a weed problem. We're just going to go put X and X and X on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we we do that. We research the, the right products. We research the right time to use those products so that we could solve the problem and not put a band-aid over it and cover it for a season. Yeah. And so we we do that, and it's going to be continuous. It's, it's not something that the association is going to say, okay, we got rid of it. Woohoo! Right. We're done. Right. It's going to have to keep going over and over. Right. And you know, and I think that. <clears throat> brings back one of the reasons how you and I connected is that um, the lake that I grew up on in northern Minnesota, you guys solved their problem. Yep. And then we brought you in here to Schmidt Lake and you know, so it's you know it's not just a, this isn't just a one time thanks for fixing our problems and you're on. I mean I've, this is the second one in my family uh, that we've seen these kind of benefits from. So Yeah. And and it's gonna continue to get that way. Uh, the research, the technology, it's there, the rules, the, the guidance is there uh, in the state of Minnesota. We have what we need um, in, in law to do this kind of work properly. Yeah. And you, you know, once you do the homework and do that math, the regulatory agencies look at you and say, okay, you've done it, good. Right, and, you know. and I think the thing that I'm starting to hear 
in the times that we've referred you to other people, there's good fish around here too. <laughs> um, the thing that we've started to hear now is that you seem to be almost the, the grant expert. I mean, uh, I don't know if yeah. that's uh, something that you can necessarily put out there to, as a statement, but you, you seem to be favorably seen by the state agencies and things like that. And so I've, I've felt that to be a great opportunity to refer your services because I, you seem to, if nothing else, get along well with the permitting process, the state agencies, um, and as a result of that, you're accomplishing the association's goals. Yeah, and, and, and part of that is, you know, the people that work with our company, we're not just out there to make a profit. A lot of us are fishermen. A lot of us do right. cherish these resources. Right. So we don't want to go out and implement a program that's going to make an agency frown on us right. And, right. and say, well, you don't know what you're doing. And, and, and you know, you didn't show us this, you didn't do that. So if you do your homework and you have all that stuff and all your ducks lined up, you will qualify for grant money. Right. And we do have a history of being the grant people. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. We had a record of, of almost 100% of the people that followed our process get a grant each year. Wow. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's not a lot of money, but in situations like Schmidt Lake, it was covered the cost of the treatment. Right. right. So it worked out great. Yeah. Where some lakes it doesn't cover the whole cost, but it helps get to that end goal. Well, it seems like it brings the, the state agencies into... Uh, partnership and, yeah. and they, I mean they bring they start to share the partnership of what happens here and I know that when we've talked about different concerns on the lake one of your first calls is usually to check with the state to make sure that we're right on course and things like that and I think that seems to be a, a higher level of responsibility I think so yeah we, we research the rules and regulations and there's they're not loopholes they're Right. right, clearly. <laughs> right, and yeah. if you follow the the, the, the regulations, you'll yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, a lot of associations don't want to take that time to do the planning and do that. They just want to get rid of it right away. Right, and the end result with that is that they're just putting a bandaid over it year after year right. after year. But if you take the time to do the plan and, and, and do the prescriptions and, and do the science and apply the science, you get to where we're at today. Right. Well, and I think going back to that, to your credit. Um, we did want to look for the quick fix <clears throat> and your response was that you need to come out you need to do plant surveys um, you uh, I don't remember what you call it but you mapped out the entire lake um, so again even though I think I know just about every <coughs> excuse me I think I know about every area of this lake um, in the end you know it better and so as we go around here you're very well versed with it, and so there's no surprises. Yeah, yeah. and that's, you know, it's, it's another reason those assessments are important to us. It gets our crews out here, they know where the rocks are, they know where this is at, they know where that's at. So it puts them in, in, in kind of a, a, an upfront, we know what's coming type scenario. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, people will contract us to come out and do something, and we show up, and we can't get the job done because there's it's a cattail bog. Or, you know some things, but when we, when we have the opportunity to, to look at the lake in detail and work with the association, it works out a lot better. Right. Right. Well, it's worked out phenomenal for us, and as we've kind of drifted along here, and now we're actually right in front of my own house. I mean, I I look at what um, when it comes right down to the fact that we actually have control of our lake. I mean, with the tools that I have through Weeders Digest, of course. I mean, obviously. My swimming area is going to be perfect no matter what. I mean, that's, that's just a given. <laughs> and I've got that under control. But knowing how to control the acreage of the lake, obviously that's been to your success. And uh, so this is just a, yeah. like I said, we're kind of out here almost celebrating the, the success that we have had and talking about it. And uh, this is a good chance to thank you for it. So. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Patrick.